It's Monday morning. I'm here with Arlo. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> We're going to build this giant wall. It's, it's going to go like that and be 20 something feet tall and i kind of feel like we're at the beach together you got yeah, uh you yeah, got that got, going yeah, on yeah. and I, uh i got some i got that going on I flops i could go put my flip-flops on yeah I'm that's gonna, going on it's kind of a beach day i think it's going to be close to 90 you're like oh geez well, let me tell you something arlo we are not at the beach uh, i know we not. are at the nanahala retreat and we got to get to work there's a couple ways we could do this we're discussing right now one is uh we build basically the you know eight foot section and then have these pieces uh that kind of stick up like this for now and then we'll, we'll frame you know that part later what do you think about that that's not bad and that that'll prevent uh having a hinge point uh, or we can ch you know chalk lines on the floor and, and and screw the plates down and 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 stick all this in now what, what and stand it up is it one big window is it? Yeah, well they got a window there we got a window there, we got a window there, there. <laughs> so it'll save a lot of time to do it on the ground if we can lift it. Wow, that was a good move. Look at that. What is that? That's sap. It came oh out. my God. gosh. <laughs> and after thinking about it for a minute or two, Arlo and I decided that framing this wall, laying flat on the floor, and then standing it would be the best idea. And to do that, we needed to find the total height of this wall so we could chalk it on the floor and tack the plates down. And since this is a 12, 12 pitch roof, which is 45 degrees, our peak above the eight foot wall height should simply be half the distance between our outside walls. First, we chalked a line representing the bottom plate and then we measured up the total height of the wall, which ended up being about 21 feet off the floor. And we chalked our two top plate lines to a point. Next, we cut our top and bottom plates and we're attaching these to the floor now because they need to be straight to these chalk lines. We're actually gonna measure between the bottom plate and these top plates to get the stud lengths. So if they're not straight, we won't get accurate measurements. Next, we did our layout on the bottom plate and then check those numbers because we're just matching those numbers to this top plate and we're using the outside wall surface as a reference to make sure these studs are plumb when we stay in the wall. You could also do the layout by measuring across the angle of the top plate and doing math on what the spacing should be on the studs that way. Next we pulled measurements and started sticking in the studs and window framing. Our first window opening took about a half hour and then the second one took about 10 minutes because it was just repeating the same process. The large header you see here is not load bearing, but we decided to use a solid member here because it would create a more rigid wall, which is important on a tall one like this. So I've got a screw here. I'm trying to go to this line, but I went too far and I'm trying to pull my screw out, but it's just moving. It's not coming out. You can see it's just moving the board. So it's not gonna come out. So I need another screw to get that screw out called the extractor screw. Just put that one in, not sinking the head. It'll hold the board, now I can pull this one, and then I can pull the extractor. So I saw this on uh, Awesome Framers on Instagram. Okay. And I bought one instantly. They wow. weren't selling it, they were just using one. I'm like, what is that? And it, it's to pull plates tight. Dude, that's pretty cool. So, there you go. Nice Good job, buddy. What? Come on! Shoot it. Wow. We've been wearing these Gooder glasses and they have really fun names. These are uh, Silverback Squat Mobility. What are yours called? What are the names of those? Sleazy Riders. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Pretty fitting name for those. I like them. <laughs> what are yours? Uh, donkey goggles. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. They match your shirt, though. I know. That's awesome. Man, you look awesome. You, match your you look like a rock star, bud. Yeah, dude. dude, I am. <laughs> GZ top. In addition to being a very tall wall, this wall is also supporting a roof load out on the front of the house. And for that reason, we made these two huge packed out columns, basically two tree trunks, 
to support the load and keep the wall from flexing under any wind loads. With this wall almost framed, we decided to stop and not put in the top window and top window header for the fear of it getting too heavy. And we also called in some reinforcements to do the wall lift, my dad and Jamie who had been working on his project in town. Jamie gave us a first look at the hand as it's now dubbed from NP Prosthetics. He's just gotten back from Seattle where they custom fitted him with this prosthetic to help him do his job better. You might be wondering how we figured how many people it would take to lift this wall or if we could at all. And my answer is that we've just done this a lot of times and we can now size something up and pretty much know whether it's gonna be possible or not. With seven guys though, this was about the limit. First, we got the wall up on some saw horses so that we could attach these braces or push sticks as I call them. This will help us lift the top part of the wall which will feel heavier and heavier because of the cantilever effect the higher we went. I was actually wanting to fly the drone and get some footage as this wall went up, but it was my judgment that we would need every bit of manpower. And my judgment was correct, but we were able to get it up. And that is a huge relief to get this step of the project done. Since we did not frame this top window and header while the wall was on the ground, which by the way is way faster and why we did it, we had to scaffold up and finish this top bit up in the air. The header that goes across this window is three ply and it'll carry a beam which carries the roof load and spread that weight across to the two columns down to the floor below. You know what time it is. Time to crack open a few warm ones. Warm bubblies. Warm bubblies. <laughs> it's almost good as an ice cold IPA. But not really. I mean, it's really not even warm. It's more like hot. Mm. Mm. Cheers. Warm. Where's yours, Ray? Uh, I don't want <laughs> Tastes like grape. <laughs> And we were back the next morning to start framing the decks. And as usual, I forgot a few things we needed to do this. Here I am again, what am I doing here? <laughs> I, don't, I forgot some stuff. Every day you call me and I bring you all the stuff you forgot. I know. You know how hard it is to build something when you're not at the place where it needs to be built? Right, that's why I had you come out here so I didn't have to leave here right. to bring me flashing I forgot. Okay, I'm just so nice, I brought you three different kinds of flashing, even though you didn't ask for it. Nice. Three. One, two, three. <laughs> nice. Three. Okay, we have a roll of flashing, 10 inch flashing. That's for out in the flats, flashing behind joints, flashing on the ends, anywhere you just need a big flat piece. We have some 90 degree bent corner flashing. That's five and five. So Outside corners. Around the corner so you don't have to whack it, bend it over a two by four and beat it with a hammer. Can't say whack okay? it. It's, <laughs> can't say whack it. Uh, yeah, nice and tight corner, looking good. We also have some ripped flashing. I ripped it down to four inches. You're only gonna let one inch of it hang down below the band okay like a counter flash yes it's a little counter flash so we can slip another piece under it without having to go behind the actual band itself you know why because it's going to get bolted and screwed and nailed and beat to the wall it'll be bolted so tight you'll never slip a piece of flashing behind it okay yep. and then we're going to bend another little like a little hat cap like yep. flashing drip cap like a drip cap yeah to go the, over the siding that's under the, the deck siding. band yes so it all flashes it's a out lot. it's i mean if you think about it you got your siding and then you got a ledger flash, and then you got the band board, which acts as a piece of flashing or siding, and then you got your counter flash, and then you've got your little cap flash. Trip cap over the It's next. a four piece system, and it, it needs to be. It's, what do they call that? Uh, you've reached the point of irreducible complexity. <laughs> That's what okay. it is. This is where I'm about to cut this you off. This is as simple as it's we can make close. it. This is as simple as we can make it. We don't want it to be complicated. Why would you want it to be complicated? After getting our footings cleaned off a little bit, it was time to find the exact location of the bottom of these posts so we could mount a post bracket to the footing. And I like to do this just using string lines and tape measures. I find it to be the most accurate way without a whole lot of hassle. A quick note is that we're measuring from the framing layer of the house, not the outside of the sheathing, which is an inch different. It's important that when you're doing these measurements, you measure from the same spot every time or you could get way off and not even know it. Hey, you wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? Yeah. Can't double stamp a triple stamp, Lord. <laughs> 
Our post brackets are bolted down with a heavy duty bolt that is a wedge anchor type. You drive a pin and it spreads the bottom of the bolt, keeping it from ever pulling out. Then you can tighten the nut on this giant heavy duty washer, keeping the post base secure. Next, I made some marks on the house to represent where we want the top of the framing to be, which is two inches down from the subfloor. That leaves one inch for decking and then another inch so that water could never run in the house. We pulled that down number and then we'll go across all the footings on top of our post bases and get the up number. We'll add these two numbers together and that will be the total length of each post. And each of these posts is slightly different length because the top of these footings are not all at the same elevation. We simply dug them down till we hit solid ground and then filled them back with a foot or more of concrete. And so each one is slightly or drastically different. To make sure our posts line up perfectly, first we set our two end posts, then we stretch a string line between them and then mount our post bases on the intermediate posts based on the string line. <laughs> Pro tip of the day here, if you're using a battery saw, a fresh blade really makes a big difference on the battery life, we find. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, this thing isn't shot shot. Like if you had that on a corded saw, you'd probably run it a while longer, but you know, it makes a huge difference. You probably caught double oh, yeah. the boards with, with the new one. So yeah. we always keep them fresh. fresh. And then Ray, he's I'll gonna take, take that one take and put it on, on his saw. <laughs> exactly. Ray puts this on his saw and then later his wife takes it and paints pictures on yeah. and sells them at the flea market. <laughs> Nothing goes to waste. <laughs> Yo, Panama Jack. What are you drinking? That's a beach plum LaCroix. It's really good. It's a beach plum. It's like a beach bum. It's that beach plum. Oh my gosh. Dude, how many flavors can they come up with? That's good. You know we live it's in so the good. mountains, right? We don't live at the beach. <laughs> Look at that out there. That's not beach, beach plum, bum. <laughs> it's somewhere out there, but that's the end. You're right, it's way out there. It's the end. Using our string line, I was able to plumb down to each footing and mark for the placement of each bracket. Then we set each intermediate post, bracing in both directions. And this isn't the final alignment of the post, though. We'll actually set the girder on here and use a string line to straighten the girder and therefore align the posts. In preparation for installing the deck band against the house, we do some flashing. A counter flash is installed that'll hang down one inch, allowing us to slip a drip cap in later. And we also do solid flashing on the corners to prevent leaks. Next, our pressure treated two x 10 deck band can be installed to the side of the sheathing. And we're just shooting it on with some galvanized nails temporarily. Then we'll come back with some five inch ledger lock screws, which are code approved heavy duty lags to actually bolt this thing to the framing of the house that's behind the sheathing. And after our band was fully secured, we came back and added a ledger board that will support the ends of the floor joists as they butt into the band. You see an issue with one of these? Uh, no, not unless that tree's not dead yet. <laughs> I think we pulled a foot monster, extra foot on it. Yeah, you know, that's what you get when you got your head down. That's good, that's right, they're working. Yep. Next, we installed the inside layer of our two-ply girder. Meanwhile, Arlo was going crazy, notching one end of all the joists so we could get a step ahead on that. We're setting these two by 10 floor joists on a 16 inch center, even though they could be on 24s, we don't wanna do that in case we decide to go with a composite decking that isn't structural. One note here is that we're paying special attention to the straightness of this outside girder as we're installing these floor joists. It's really easy to push it out of alignment with a floor joist, or if you have one too short, it will bow it in. And it's okay if you don't cut them all the same, it's more important for me to make sure the girder stays straight. Hey, what's it like putting in deck joists and keeping the band straight? It ain't easy. Is it a battle? It's a battle. These donkey goggles are helping though. <laughs> Glad to know that. So this section we got eight foot eight between. Okay, so is it edge to edge? Well, it's edge to center to center to edge. You know <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> That's Leah. Oh my gosh, dude, put me on the truss crew or whatever is going on over there. <laughs> no. I went off the Post Malone, Post Alone crew. Looking across our deck framing, I'm already imagining the great times our owners will have sitting and enjoying this awesome view. Thanks for building with us today, and we'll see you on the next one.